recorded live. Good afternoon. This is Kevin Tilsner of Zeitgeist Philadelphia Radio. Call ID number 91812 on uh, the Talk Show Live Network. Uh, we have a old time guest on here, like an old time friend from our uh, previous, long time previous days of podcasting. Uh, back with our old sister show um, from Caution Tinfoil Hat Area days, uh, as well as uh, one from the Zeitgeist era here, where uh, uh, Kim Priori has gone down to had gone down to uh, the see Jacques Fresco at the Venus Project before he passed away. Uh, so, Ken, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing good, but you know, of course, as soon as we started, someone decided to do some drilling in my roof or something. Uh, I'm hoping they stop. <laughs> hey, I'm doing a podcast. Are you drilling up there? Okay. Awesome. Thanks, man. <laughs> Can you wait an hour? All right. Sweet. All right. That's so good. It was just my roommate. So if it was my landlord, that would have been a problem. But um, That's pretty funny. Yeah. But I wrote a romance. And that's a, that's going to be available in print on Monday. You want to hear about that? You mean it's actually going to be available like in hard like a like paper form? Yeah, paper form. on the internet. Yeah, huh. yeah. Monday. I was trying to get it ready for Valentine's Day, but um, it's been it's been a, a year since I published the book, and I I forgot a bunch of things, and so I had to I had to redo it for like two weeks to get it up to to the me time publishing standards because it was uh it was substandard but um but it's ready now and it takes um it and this is the delay in the supply chain so i got it finalized this morning and it's going to take three to five days which is you know monday by monday you'll be able to order the uh the paperback books off of off of amazon or one of the other distributors it goes through nice yeah. And um, do you have it, like, available for, like, Kindle and stuff like that, too? Yeah, yeah. The so Love and Hamburgers is the name of my romance. It's a paranormal romance. I've been really into it. I've been hanging out in the goth scene ever since I got to L.A., so I'm really into, like, the the, the paranormal and the, the creepy creepy stuff. And um, and so, uh, um, yeah, Love and Hamburgers is a paranormal romance um, that you can read for free on my webpad. You can read um, a pretty super finalized version on my um, Patreon page if you're a subscriber, but it's also available on as an ebook because that's a lot faster than the print book. It's available as an ebook on uh, Kindle. Um, I think it's I want to say it's $4.99, um, and uh, so that one is or maybe $3.99. I forget, but uh, but yeah, it's just a novella. Um, it's part of a series, so it's a short story, or it's a long short story that that I write every year. Um, and uh, this was the first year of that I finished the first book, but uh, the first one was the toughest because I was nailing down everything to go into the the later books, you know. Um, uh, but it's basically I, I start writing it in uh, October, and so when I write the book in October, you can read it as I write it on Wattpad. Every week I put up a new chapter, um, and then people can give me feedback there before I go to um, publishing it on Amazon. And so when it's done, I'm I'm actually putting out the last um, two chapters on the uh, on, on Wattpad right now, so Friday and next Friday, um, and then the story is complete. Uh, but uh, I've already finalized the, the print version, and that's that's not going to change. Um, um, so, so what what is that with the web pad that you were able to put stuff out there for other people to oh, read? Yeah, so, like? so web pad has been like one of the greatest writing tools that I've used since I started writing. Um, it is it is this website. Um, where it's a, it's a social media for writers, right? So you can write anything. You can write a, 
story or a nonfiction or a short or a collection of shorts or poetry or, you know, whatever. It's very um, non-directional, um, nonfiction, your thoughts on politics, whatever. Whatever it is you want to write, you can write it. And then it's like your Facebook page, um, but then it's got your uh, the things you've written and people can read read what you've written, and you can um, you, basically there's draft mode, and that you can write it when um, nobody sees it but you, and then you can publish it, and then once you publish it, you can you publish a chapter at a time, um, and the uh, people comment on it, and they can comment on the paragraph. So if they're talking about something in a specific paragraph. They can click on the paragraph and then leave a comment, uh, which is super helpful if you, you know, if you've done some sort of continuity problem or something. People like point it out like right away, like, oh wait, that doesn't make any sense because this other thing happened that you forgot about because you know it was like four weeks ago since you wrote that, but they just read it, you know. Um, and so that's like super helpful. And then you can republish, and it keeps a copy of all the drafts you do. So every time you rewrite it, um, it. it it, it creates a new uh, version, I guess, version control. And so if you change something and then, like, you can always go back, um, and it's super useful. And then once you got it all done, all your chapters are together, then you mark it as complete, and then it's a complete book. And, you know, people, it's, just, it's just a search thing so people know that, you know, you're not still writing it. It's actually done for people who just want to read the whole thing start to finish. Um, but, yeah, and they have, like, contests and stuff and, and the, but the thing that really um, saved me, because, like, I was – so, <laughs> so anyway, so, like, after college, I, I went on the road, and I did um, – um, it was uh, uh, WOLF, and it's Worldwide Organization of Organic Farmers. And uh, so I was going around volunteering at all these farms to learn about farming and sustainability and all that, that jazz, um, and I was – Figuring after a year when I was done with it, I'd have a job, but I didn't. And so, um, so I'm in LA, and I'm basically like street performing and and delivering food and doing all this like crap that doesn't pay anything. And uh, well, I street performing was okay, but um, but it, it 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 wasn't enough. Then you know that's that's the big problem I think with everybody in our country is we all feel like all the work we do we don't get enough out of it to, to sustain ourselves, you know? Um, and so my laptop was kaput. Like I needed to rescue the hard drive and copy that to new hard drive. It's going to be like 200, 300 bucks or something. And so, um, I did, I couldn't write and it was driving me crazy, but the, then I got on the web pad cause I could write on my phone. Right, because it's like a, it's like a, um, they have an app and it's like a it's a platform, you know. Um, and so I would it's be, like Google Docs built into it, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of like that, you know. And so you know, I'd be sitting, I'd be riding my bike doing delivery or something, and I have a thought, right? And I'd be like, oh, that's really good. I got to write it down, and, you know. And so I just stopped because you know, like uh, whatever, because like they're not paying enough money to rush anyway. And I like sit there and I'd like write like, you know, a couple of get a couple of thoughts out real quick and then be on my way, you know. And then, you know, I'd be hanging out at the club, uh, at the golf club, you know, and I you know, I'd been dancing and you know, while I'm dancing I'm thinking about thinking about my story, I'm thinking about my book and then I like, Oh, that's a really good idea and, you know, what I do before is I go home and fall asleep and forget about it. But then I I sit down and I like start writing and it got to the point where I like, people were, like, I was the guy at the club who was always on my phone. And they're like, you know, he's on your phone. I'm like, yeah, I'm writing the novel, you know. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, no, really, you know. And, uh, you know, and, like, I, I remember, like, one night I went to the club, and it's, like, one of my favorite nights, and it's, like, a special night. It doesn't happen very often. And I just wanted to party, but I, I had the I had the final chapter of the book. Like, I the words were going over and over again in my head, like, 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 you know, like a Shakespearean sonnet. And I was like, God damn it. You know, like, like it's all I could think about. So I spent like a whole night on my phone. I wrote the last chapter of my, my book. I wasn't finished with it yet. I just, it was just, I, I knew what the last chapter was, you know, and it hit me. 
And so, like, there was, it, it, it's all about, you know, and this is the same idea of me time, right? It's all about eliminating those barriers that you're like, oh, I can't do it, you know? Like, we, we need to come to a society where we no longer say, I can't do it. I just, you know, uh, when people say, I, I can't do this, we can say, yes, you can. Go over here. This person will help you or this website will help you or, you know, the, the, you know get, we need to, to, to get the resources to people who are talented at things that aren't resource gathering. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what we kind of got to eliminate in the uh, in the way we do our investing, you know, because we're just seeing the same money go to the same people over and over again. Because the people who you know they're out to make money and they know who they can go to and who makes money and they're like, oh, what's your next thing? And then that person gets all the money till they die, and then you know, and then there's you know, so what? We got to wait like 80 years, like oh, when I'm in my 70s. Uh, I'll be able to, it'll be my turn to, to get some investment income here to, to do something in life. Like, we can't wait that long, you know? Like, our lives are over at that point, you know? It's like, those are the golden years. So, yeah, as I've been mentioning, I've been, like, writing my own story as well. How would me time help me? Like, I, I'm actually, you, everything you've mentioned about it thus far has gotten me like really uh, attracted to this idea because I'm looking to eventually publish soon. I mean, like I mentioned before the show, I've got over 35,000 words at the moment and I'm looking to get it up to about like 40 to 50 in order to like get it to the point where I feel like I'm ready to publish it because I have like, you know, a few, I've got the basic story written at the moment and I have, I want to go back in and I want to like, maybe add a chapter or two here and there and change a chapter or two here and there and um, fix up some of the things that I don't feel were, um, I, I guess I want to expand upon things that I've already put into it because the story's already there. Do you know what I'm saying? And like, right. how, how would, uh, how would your, your site help me out? I'm, I'm really curious because this could, actually help me get to the next level as well if I just sign on and get involved. Right. Well, okay, so before we talk about me time, let's talk a little more about Wattpad. So like I already explained, like, you know, you kind of have the same sort of concept. And, and like, right now, I would say Wattpad is, like, the closest thing to what I want to do with me time. Right? So let's talk about the differences, okay? So, like, Wattpad, you can put up your stories and people give you feedback, which is great, right? That's that's what every early writer needs. Now, the problem is is that there's no sort of um, what's the word? There's no sort of um, other than the, you know, the yearly awards which they give out to like eight, eight pieces or something like that. Um, there's no real way of knowing who's going to be somebody who's like a serious like inspiring author or, or who is just some, you know, 13-year-old that's just, you know, pre-typing poorly something that they read on the Internet, you know. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's, 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 it's so hard to discover um, good stuff, you know. And, like, like um, you know, I have a couple of authors that I'm friends with on, on, on Webpad, that we, you know, we all critique each other's books, and that's great that that happened, but that took, like, uh, you know, that took more, like, almost a year for that to come together, and then we're only, like, a couple people, you know, um, and and we're all super busy, and we don't always have time, and might go for a while without checking in with somebody, and, you know, uh, it's, it's really kind of unstructured, and so with me time, it's more about that creating the structure, and having a way to like look at somebody's page and see their membership badges and their their um, completion ranks and stuff like that, and say, okay, this person has worked on a lot of stuff. I can click on their, um, you know, I can click on their uh, um, their projects that they've worked on, and and see um, how that works. So so it all starts when the author creates the project. Right, he creates a, a project file, 
Okay, and the project file is, you know, it's got all the basics in it, right? And it's got to have, it's going to have the outline. It's got to have, like, a couple of different sized pitches. It's got to have, like, a character list. It's got to have, like, a sample, uh, preferably from the beginning of the story, but, you know, a sample nonetheless. Um, and, uh, you know, once it has all that, then the author is ready to put it out there, and they have to have a basic, you know, not a lot, small number of coins. I, I don't know what it, what, are, what it will be. This is in the future, imaginary. But, um, you know, say like 60 coins, right? Like just to, you know, enough that they could do a little work on their own, take a couple tests, um, watch a couple of videos, and they can earn the coins. That's enough to know that they know what they're they're doing. And then they can say, okay, well, I have this little amount of coins, but it's enough to make a project. And let's make sure that my my project is is satisfactory before I put it out there and spend the coins on it. You know, kind of just a little little bit to say, hey, think about what you're doing. You know, um, and then once the project's out there, then um, the project file would have its own kind of like bank of coins, investment coins and production coins um, that are used um, to, to hire people or to uh, mark, you know, um, royalty rates. The author gets a set six, I think 50% royalty rate um, that, that just because they're like the master of the project. Um, and so then they become the me in me time, right? And so, um, so they have their, their project, and then people can either say, hey, I like your project, I'd like to work on it, I can edit it for you for this number of coins, um, or hey, I like your project, here's some coins, or like, uh, hey, you know, and the readers, the way the readers work is, is, you know, that's a great way to earn small, you know, coins, um, you know, a little bit, but you can earn pretty quickly if you're, if you're actually doing stuff, read people's stuff give constructive comments and if you know and whether a comment is constructive or not is based off of the the author right of the, the project runner so he's like you know he gets a comment it's a good comment he can throw that per, the reader a couple coins and say hey thanks that was a really helpful comment um thanks for doing that if it's garbage then they don't get any coins and the person probably gets kicked off the site or something for being a troll you know um, but, uh, you know, it, it is, you, people, the, the, even though it's a social community, people have to realize it's a social business community and people are there to do, do business, right? So, um, so yeah, so you can say, hey, you know, I need an editor. I've got this many coins. Somebody might say yes. You know, basically it's, it's like a, it's like a, you know, it's a social community. And, um, and, but it's all people who are there for the purposes of being, professional you know you might go to an artist page and the artist has his gallery where he's got different artworks and you know you can say hey i really like the style of this one picture you know would you be interested in doing a cover or a graphic novel in that style you know you could do something like that um you know you could you, you, all sorts of things and, and the other thing too is, is promoters that's another thing that i want to have on there i call them my marketeers um, cause it's, it sounds funny to me, but, um, but uh, like musketeers, but marketeers and a marketeer could be somebody who helps maybe with your social media presence or helps promote your book or something like that. Um, so now you've got a, another incentive because now these people can get coins for doing that, that they can put into projects they like as investments that they think will make money. You know, especially if it's something that they're promoting themselves, like, hey, I'd like to promote, you know, your 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 book for this many coins, um, you know, um, and I'll do this. I'll go post on all these sites about how I, how much I like your book or something like that, you know. So there's there's is everything goes towards um, the success of the project, right? Nothing goes against the success of the project. There's no kind of the merit system unless you do something shady like you figure out some kind of way to scam the coins or something like that and you know we see that you're you know doing like something where you're doing like some kind of reinvestment scam or something where the person's getting a lot of coins but not doing any work 
because we'll see, we can see the version, we can see the project and look at the versions and see what work got done. You know, so somebody suddenly got 30,000 coins and they didn't, didn't do any work. They're like, hey, where's the work? You know, that you got for those coins, or you, you know, why the author give you these coins, or you pulling something, you know. So it's all, it's, it's all very, very um, self regulating, you know. Um, so you just going on there and creating a project. Um, if you have a project that, that's something that people are interested in, they'll tell you about it because they're going to get some coins for doing it. And if there's something they're not interested in, they can articulate why then uh, they can also get some coins out of it, you know? So e either way, whether you're doing good or you're doing bad, everybody's going to be working towards making what it is you're doing better. That's really awesome. I, I now, like, feel like I have a good understanding of, of it. When you were first talking about it earlier, I, I don't think I fully realized what exactly it was, but now... Now I, I I feel like I've got definitely a better handle on it. That's really great. I, I uh, you came up with this platform all on your own as well. Um. Well, I mean, you know, I like like I said, I, I I've been doing this for a while. I've been going on different websites and stuff. And my business plan, I talk about all the the different website, uh, different companies that I look at and what they did and why why I think what they did was right or wrong or how it could be better, um, you know, so you can kind of see where the ideas generate from. Um, you know, the idea of using the, the cryptocurrency um, to, to incentivize people was uh, another website called uh, Steemit that I went on recently, and, and they do sort of a similar thing where people, they post articles to the website and, um by doing that, um, people, when they hit the like button, they get um, a certain amount of cryptocurrency based off of how much cryptocurrency the person who hit the button has, um, which has, I mean, it, it, it's the basic idea, but they, 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 they have a lot of problems with it. Like they have bots, you know, that people can use to kind of create fake um, popularity, like they pay the bots that then likes their thing and then they get the money back when the bot likes their thing and so like they, they have a lot of ways to, to game the system and they haven't really figured out how to deal with it yet um, and, and yours kind of keeps that uh, scanning hacking thing off off of the problem like it, it keeps it, the, that problem out of the feasibility Right, because that's the thing is is that um, you know um, the people who are actually doing the work, if they see something that's obviously uh, a bot or something, then um, you know they're they're gonna uh, point that out immediately, you know, because that means that that all of a sudden they're not going to be getting that's taking work away from them, you know what I mean? That's taking away what they do. Um, because it's it's it's, it's it, the the website. Since I can't build a robot that writes books, I'm building a website for people that write books. You know, and so that's you know the, that's it's basically the same idea. And this is where I'm like kind of trying to build the the framework, the, the structure for educating the book writing robot. Is that you know if I can create a structure that helps people write better books. You know, it's the same thing. The, the robot's going to learn how to write books the same way people are. So if we can make uh, an environment that makes people, eventually someday, yeah, we'll have a, 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 our great robot author, you know. Um, but we don't need him right now because people like to write books. So, you know, um, if we create that, that structure first um, for the people who do like to write books, then then we don't we don't have to worry about when the robot comes along, you know. Um and and so of course putting any kind of like we might have robots in the website that that, you know, are marked that are ours that help people, like kind of automatic helper um, you know, programs. But, you know, nobody using the site is allowed to be a robot. And if they are, it's gonna show real quick 
because they're not going to have a very high rank. They're not going to be helping people. They're not going to be, um, you know, be able to pass the kind of achievements that are needed to prove your your um, abilities uh, in each craft, um, each membership. So, so yeah, it's 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 that's that's really the the, the key there is to um, to 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 have the information available in front of people so that they can see if it's legit or if it's BS, you know? That's awesome. Thank you. Like, I, I, I really appreciate all of this. Like this was, um, I, I hope that other people that listen to this show get as much out of it as I have gotten out of it, because for someone who's at, uh, the level of progress that I am at with, with, uh, writing a book, everything that you've told me about today and what you've used, I plan on like getting into within the next like couple of days myself just to like, um, yeah, definitely get on yeah. what pad with me. Like, like yeah. it, it doesn't hurt. Like, you know, you can always unpublish, you know, if you want, like, like when fake tattoos right now, it's up there, but when I go to the print, it's, I'm going to unpublish it, you know, from the, the website. Cause at that point, you know, it's 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 a novel. It's time to, to to buy the book. But till then, you know, I have no problem with people reading it on there. And of course, if they're one of my Patreon subscribers, they'll they'll always get all of my books for free. That's kind of my deal. Um, you know, they get the they get the ebook automatically, and then at the end of the year, they get a print version of the book that I wrote um, that they help you know help me create um, autographs, of course. For extra extra value, um, nice. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta you gotta do what you can, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely get on Wattpad right away because then you get feedback, and and that's great. It might take a little while to get views. The best way to get views is to find other people who have stuff you like to read and read their stuff and comment on it, and they'll probably check you out as well, you know. Um, right. I did a lot of marketing on Love and Hamburgers, so um, that went, that, that's that been going really, really well. Um, you know, I did a whole video YouTube campaign thing, and, and um, you know, I made ads for it, like, a month before it came out, and, like, video ads, and, like, it's free. Come read it every week, you know. Um, and that's really helped, and um, you know, and having people read and comment, and and people when people comment, it shows up. If you go to their page, you can see what they commented on. So you know, you can you can go ahead and and say, oh, they they really are enjoying this. So let's see what it is. Um, and so, so yeah, so Webpad's great for, great for that. I just want to take it up to the next level. And, you know, I had thought about contacting Wattpad, but, uh, you know, they have their own thing going on. And, and I'm, I think that should just stay as it is because uh, those, you know, those 13-year-old writers who aren't that great are real popular with other 13-year-old writers who aren't that great. So, you know, that's great, right? You know? Um, so, yeah, why not? It, this, 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 everybody should have access to something to help them along. Um, yeah. But love and hamburgers, you, you got to read it. It's I, like I, I I have the if you download the the sample off of Kindle, right? I tell people it's like Pringles, you know. You can't just have that one chip, you know. You read the beginning, and you're like, no, I got I got to find out where this goes. And yeah, uh, you're like a drug dealer. It's where it makes it free. <laughs> yeah, and so. so so, so, so a theme in both books, love and hamburgers, and and fake tattoos, is, is this kind of idea of where we draw the line between magic and mental illness. You know, because like one of my favorite sayings is that you know, uh, uh, religion is just a uh, is just acceptable form of mental illness, right? You know, like. Like I see, I believe in something that that I can't prove exists. You know, if it was anything other than religion, you know, they'd lock you up, right? So, <laughs> so you know, it's like so with magic. You know, we all have those, you know, friends or been those friends 
um, hey, I believe in magic. I uh, I believe in God. I believe in all that stuff, you know. But am I am I crazy for 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 thinking that stuff, you know? Um, the, if you don't ask yourself that question, I think that's that's when you're crazy, right? Um, and so uh, both books kind of play with these ideas of is uh, you know, of course, coming from the psychology background. Um, are you are are you magical? Or are you mentally ill, right? And so um, with Love and Hamburgers, uh, the, the characters are, so there's, there's this girl, her name's Liz. Um, it's the Rick and Liz saga. So Liz is, she can see the future. I think they call it pre, precognition. She has precognition, right? And she's had it ever since she was a little girl. And the only way that she can stop it because she hates it, right? Because you imagine if you knew everything that was going to happen to you and there's nothing you could do to change it, no matter how hard you tried, no matter what you did, it was going to happen, right? Now, how, how, how sucky would that be, right? So that's what she's dealing with, right, is, is this issue. And so she's found that the solution is to get wasted drunk, like, all the time, right? Like, she started doing it when she was, like, in, in high school, and at middle school and high school, and then and then when she was in college, she just like went full bender and never came back. She finished college, but you know she's just wasted all the time. She can't find a job. She's broke. She owes everybody money, and so um, she's just got to get out of town, right? And so this guy walks into the bar, and she's like, "This is a guy, right?" And so. Um, you know, like uh, he's like, well, you know, I'm going, I'm going to Los Angeles to to get an In and Out burger, right? Well, it was originally In and Out, but I changed it it's Out and About burger now. So I'm going to Los Angeles to get Out and About burger. You want to come? And she's like, wait, no, I can't, I can't do that. You're nuts. And the other thing is, she's a phone addict, right? That's the other thing that takes the mind off the future is 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 the Facebook, right? So she's always on Facebook. And her, and she's she's like no 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 and she's you know going to tweet about the um or whatever about this what happened where this guy like was going to take her to uh, um, Los Angeles to get a to get a hamburger and um and her phone's dead because she's been on her phone all night she's wasted and the phone's dying and she can't tweet it and she's just standing there and she's like well shit I'm not doing anything else and so she runs off and you know it's like yeah let's go. And um, so they started heading across country um, to um, to Los Angeles. Well, she doesn't have any money on it, right? So she can't she just she can't get drunk. And so the the future vision is it's overcoming her. And this is the this is a really cool thing about it too. Is um, so studying artificial intelligence and psychology, bringing it all around. Um, so the the frontal lobe, right, the, the, the front of your brain, um, forebrain sometimes it's called, but it's, it's, it's how we predict the future, right? It's how we kind of know when the glass falls off the table that if we don't catch it, it's going to smash on the floor. We see it in both states at once. We see it smashed and we see it caught, and then we kept I sincerely apologize for the lull in, in uh, production at the moment. Uh, again, though, I would like to thank everyone for having joined us. Uh, yeah, I hope everyone uh, gets as much out of it as I have, especially if you are an inspiring writer yourself, or aspiring writer yourself. I will uh, probably add some more into the idea of this show along those lines when it comes to um, not just how, like, yes, Ken is an old fan, uh, an old friend of the show, uh, but it's also like he has definitely left a lot of great information here for uh, new writers and how they can definitely get some more information on uh, doing things themselves with that kind, with, with the kind of, um, sharing opportunities that uh, we would all like to see if, say, we were uh, 
uh, in the Venus Project in a couple decades and so on. Like these are the kinds of things that we're still working on today, and and we are still part of that transition uh, in order to get to this this kind of um, idea. And like these, everything he's been speaking of is is definitely part of the the steps along the way of of what we're getting to. Uh, this just happens to be one of the areas of opportunity that we are uh, steadily encroaching on, which happens to be like uh, for writers as well as um, uh, for different opportunities for, for other people along these lines, uh, as you mentioned, artists and so on. <clears throat> oh, there we go. He's back. Oh, hang on. I'm sorry. I, I had a... Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, a couple months ago, I had this really awesome phone, and then I was doing deliveries, and the phone popped off my handlebars because uh, I had like a phone holder, and uh, which happens all the time. It's usually not a big deal, but as I hit the brakes, um, it, it was the the wheel was on top of the phone, and it was screened down, and so I just skidded out like half a LA block on this phone. And uh, so I had to buy, like, the cheapest possible phone that I could get that I could still do work with, you know. And so sometimes it, it drops out, I guess, after uh, a two-hour call. It, uh, <laughs> it was like, what? You can't still be talking. I'm going to go to sleep now, <laughs> you know. Right on. Um, so you yeah. were talking about, like, uh, the idea of the glass falling off the table when I had mentioned to people. Oh, about, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, there's that idea of like a Schrodinger's box where the cat's alive and and dead and and it comes to the next moment of of the, the actual thing happening. Right. Yeah. So the scariest thing I learned in neurology is that our entire world is a lie. <laughs> like 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 we don't what we see of the world uh is it's completely uh it's like a fabrication right we 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 actually see like little tiny we see probably if we're lucky like one or two percent of what we experience as reality like we take that amount of information in um and then the rest is like our brain's best guess of what the universe looks like and so like once you once you hit that level then you start go, like deeply spiraling into nihilism and um and and you're multi track drifting on uh on the trolley on the trolley uh paradox, right? Um he's like crush them all, they're not real. Um <laughs> but uh but yeah it's uh it's you know um so the forebrain is what um Basically, it does a lot of things, but, but one of the things is, is, is it keeps us from dying. That's like, it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're taking actions now that might not cause us to die now, but might cause us to die later, you know. Um, that's its main job. And then it also, um, you know, can be used for, for guessing things, imaginary things, like, um, like, say, if I am looking at a mountain, I might not know what's behind that mountain, but I can take a good guess based off of the uh, information that I've, I've gathered from, from hearsay, you know, or, or, or um, what I've seen behind another mountain, like, like I, I would imagine that it would be something like that, you know, um, or it might be different based on something else. So the forebrain does a lot of things, and it's where a lot of the creativity comes from, and it's so what we used to play chess and all and, and all sorts of sports, and it's it's super useful. Um, it's it's super useful for letting you know that you need to duck when an arrow is flying at your face, you know, uh, stuff like that. Um, and so, uh, which is basically that's what um, this character Liz is, is is experiencing. She just has has a a super like if you were to say, okay, it's not magic, right? You're gonna say it's mental illness, or 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 actually not mental illness. This is where they use a neurological diversity. She's neurologically di uh, diverse in that she has a, a, a super active um, frontal lobe, 
right? Um, so and that's and she experiences that as visions of the future. Um, but but um, if you drink alcohol, well, what does alcohol do? Well, it 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 stops the forebrain from functioning. It's the first. It's your higher function, right? So, so when your body is being poisoned, uh, which is what alcohol is, um, it tries to um, conserve the 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 lower functions, which is the heart beat, lungs breathe, um, you know, uh, eyes open, that kind of stuff. You know, um, that's that's kind of like the lower brain. So that's always the last to go. And so, if somebody's drank themselves to death. They drink a lot of alcohol, like they like way too much alcohol. Um, like you should, you should fall asleep before you drink enough alcohol to die. In theory, unless you drink it really, really fast and it's really high. Like if you just, if you just down a gallon of Everclear, you probably die. You probably die uh, if you didn't go to the hospital. But um, usually, you don't drink that fast and you pass out before that happens. And before you pass out, you'll start stop thinking about the future, right? And so, because it won't be important to you, you know, people talk about being drunk and living in the now. Well, you, that's exactly what's happening, YOLO, um, because they they have no, they, their, their brains are physically incapable of understanding what the next day is. They, they That's like a... a, a a concept that, that that the can't be text is broken <laughs> right which is why when we have um you know people so well, i won't say all people but some people in life turn to alcoholism um when they know that they have something to deal with that they don't want to because it's a way to put off thinking about it because if you don't think about it and you haven't thought about it then you can't do it right now because you haven't thought about it so you drink so you can't think about it, you know, like, like, you know, people with bad relationships, they drink, you see them drinking and complaining about their relationships because they, if they get drunk enough, they'll go home and not think about breaking up with the person, which they, you know, think it might be, it might be worse to be alone than, than to have, to, or, or they just, you know, afraid to have to deal with it or, you know, um, whatever. Um, so, so that's that's kind of what's happening in the story, right? Is this this, this um, woman Liz? She's like twenty six, and she she's just drinking, so she doesn't have to deal with how she's supposed to live with her life as somebody who can see the future. Um, and so, or it's just that point, of, or maybe it's just a point of habit at this point. It's not sure. But uh, so this guy, Rick, well, he also drinks a lot. You know, that's kind of the reason why they get along well. Uh, but he drinks a lot because he, he used to be a rock star. and But he's not anymore, not because he drinks a lot. Um, you know, you can certainly drink a lot and still be a rock star. And he's certainly talented enough. Um, he just hates being famous because he feels it turns him into an asshole. And so he's kind of, um, you know, he's, he's ruined a lot of relationships in his, his life. And while he still, you know, spends time with these people and he still hangs out with them, there's still that, that, oh yeah, I was that colossal fucking asshole, right? Uh, that comes up, you know, and that's, that's ever present there when he talks to people, you know, that he knows. And, um, and so, you know, these are two people that just kind of don't fit anywhere in life. And so they, they just kind of band together and travel together. And, you know, um, and, and Liz, Liz's broken sobriety is, is broken as in broke, no money. Sobriety um, is kind of forces her to kind of have to, to deal with these issues. And because, you know, Rick is there. Um, he doesn't, she doesn't tell him what's going on, but he knows there's something happening and, you know, and so that's kind of the, the contentiousness of their, their relationship. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. The, the first book actually took me two, two years to write. It started off as a short story, um, for a school project and there was no psychic powers or any of that other stuff. It was just two people getting drunk and on a road trip 
Um, but uh, it's turning into more on that than that. And um, the hard part was writing the the middle because um, in the middle of the book, uh, they they end up in Denver and they end up in the, the hip hop scene because of uh, Rick's ex girlfriend um, slash manager ex ex manager. Um, who one of the people he dumped on, they, they hang out with her, her new boyfriend, he's a rap artist, and they spend a bunch of time in this, this culture, and I tell you the truth, um, two years ago, I didn't really know much about it, um, you know, I knew it existed, but I, I uh, you know, I was living on farms in Texas and Washington, uh, and stuff like that, and so uh, I, I wasn't really... I, I I didn't want to misrepresent the the culture, and that really that really made me hold back. Um, but then I, since I spent the last year in LA here, I've been really just uh, you can't avoid it. There's a ton of culture here, and you you walk down the street, and people are going to talk to you, and you're going to talk to them, and you know, and you're gonna you're gonna catch you're gonna catch a vibe, and I finally caught enough of caught enough of a vibe that I felt I could really, you know, represent these characters because you know, this is especially not ever, but especially these days, you don't want to misrepresent people of color. You know, you don't want to you don't want to you don't want them to be victims, right? Because that's the social narrative that's fed to us by the news. You don't want them to be, you know, criminals or, or bad people, another social narrative fed to us by the other news. Um, you know, uh, you you want to make them people, but you don't want them to make, you don't want to make them white people that have black skin. You know, you want them to be real. You want them to, to represent Real people that people can can believe in and believe that yeah this 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 is definitely like a real person and you know writing the 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 big difference I've seen really between what I was writing when I was in college and what I'm writing now um, is not only a matter of craft and 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 just doing it a bunch of times and, and understanding how words go together and stuff like that but it is also of experience. And I think uh, fake tattoos and love and hamburgers, a lot of what's in there is real experience that I, 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 you know, when I had a thing that I wanted in my book and I didn't know what to write, I just, I like, where's that thing in real life? And I go there and I say, okay, all right, this is what it's like. And I get out my phone and I start writing it down. You know, <laughs> and then sure, that was like between... I was earlier in this in earlier in the show, like we writers write about what they know, and if they don't know about something, they need to go out and learn about it in order to then process it and experience it and understand it and and make it a part of themselves. Uh, for for lack of better terminology, until you can grok a thing, you you can't um, really express it to another appropriately exactly yes yeah absolutely and and um you know and uh, if you're here in america it's there if you want to go and and know something i mean you can go and know something uh if you, if you can't then you can certainly find somebody who you can ask and just say hey i'm writing a book and i don't want to sound like an asshole you know about this. Can you tell me about it? You know, and most people will say yes. Most people love to talk about what they know about. You know, that's one thing that that that's true in life. You ask some, you want somebody to be your friend. Ask them to tell you what they know about something they they know. <laughs> you know, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, dude. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, this was a really informative show for me and it was awesome being able to catch up with you and find out what you've been doing since like I actually like saw you uh, when you came out to, to see me like right outside of Philly where I used to live and like my life has also changed a lot since then. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same <laughs> time, um, like it's, 
it, it's it's really been like amusing to see like your progress from where we first met to where you are now, you, you seem like you've accum- continued to accumulate a lot of knowledge and, and not just um, hold it within yourself, but to then, like I was just saying, like express it to others in, in a way that seems uh, like it could be very palatable for a lot of people in your stories. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, that's the, that's the kind of the, the idea because, um, you know, I feel my, I, I should say my favorite things in life is, um, you know, when you're watching a show on Netflix or, or whatever, CW, or maybe it doesn't happen quite as often on CW as it does on, on some other channels, but, but when you're watching something like a really great sci-fi series or whatever, NCSI, and it's you're watching it for the show. You're watching it for the characters and the relationships with each other. But while they're having these relationships, that's what you tune in for, they're also doing things. And they're, they're, you know, they're investigating crime scenes or they're trying to get to fix the engine on the ship or, or something. And if they're, they're good writers, even if it's something made up, they're going to add enough realism to to the job that you can start to understand how that job's done, why that job is done, the different tools that are used. Uh, like, I mean, god damn, Rob, like the stuff that I knew about investigating crime scenes after watching all of Dexter, like, 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 you know, and it's like, you know, it's like, man, I could be a crime scene investigator. And that's like what I think any good, story should have has to have those elements in there where where yes you're going on an adventure you're you're falling in love with people um but you're 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 learning something along the way and it's making you think about the world differently and it's making you think that you can do something different you know and that's really um you know what I'd like to see I think in, in all stories like the hunger games was was it, you know it's great it's all about um you know it's all about the emotions of living in that kind of society but then what's the the solution it gives us it gives us the same old solution we'll have a war and 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 kill each other and then the new person who takes power they end up being the bad guy so you got to kill them too so on and so forth. So you kind of get left with this, you know, even though you have this great emotional story, you're left with the, the, that, that shows the plight of people in real life. You're not, you're not getting to the solution, you know, you're not getting to any answers out of it, you know, whereas it is where maybe you're watching a, just a hokey crime drama, but you know, they're, they, they're looking at it and they're saying, okay, how do you, how do you stop a murder? How do you prove a murder happened? You know, they're, 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 they're coming to um, conclusions to the, the problem, you know, that are, 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 are feasible and realistic. You know, what do you do when, when somebody is falsely accused? You know, how do you act? How do you behave? And, and what people see on television or read in books, then that's going to rub off. And they're going to say, hey, you know what, that that actually is a good way to behave. That is a good way to be a good person. You know, that's a good way to solve, come up with a solution to a problem. That's, you know, um, that's that's something I never thought about before. And now maybe I'm going to go and think about that some more. Maybe I'm going to hop on Google right now and, and type in, you know, this scientist name that I heard that was mentioned briefly in this, you know, uh, historical fiction to see all the things that they invented. I mean, I love that, you know, and I try to, to put, at least in my books, put everything I can. So one of the things that you'll learn, uh, you'll learn actually a couple of things in Love and Hamburgers. You'll learn how to drive a stick ship if you've never done it before. Um, throughout the entire adventure, Liz doesn't know how to drive stick shift, and Rick does, and along the way he teaches her. And so you, you too can learn how to drive a stick shift by by reading my book. 
You also can learn a couple recipes, how to cook a couple of things. Like, like I, I put these little things in there that are like, you know, hey, the story is about this, but hey, guess what? Now you know how to make syrup bread, you know, the, the classic Alabama way. You know, like there's 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 that stuff you know that's that's in there, and, it, and if you want, you can go back and get it. You know. Yeah, that's awesome. I totally understand where you're going with that. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, it's some of the things you were just talking about. I actually watched uh, this weekend uh, the show called Mind Hunter. I think you might like it. It's uh. I saw that. So good. Oh, you, you have seen it. Okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. Everything oh, you were just talking about reminded me of that. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't mention myself. Yeah, that's a a great example. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. Like these well, people are doing they're, stuff, but they're also like bringing about all these. Like they're 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 there there are these relationship things that are going on it, and then there are like these different aspects that you were just talking about about how like they were learning how to do these different things themselves. And like, it, it was nice. It was fun to learn along with them. And then to know that this is all something that like actually happened and it is its own historical fiction in its own rights. But like, yeah, I, I really appreciated that. Right. Yeah. And what I really love, what I really love about that is that they had this idea and it was so foreign to anything that anybody had ever done before that be, like like even like the smartest people in the room like the chief or whatever it's like I don't know what the f- fuck you guys are doing in that basement you know like like but whatever as long as I don't hear any complaints about it you know kind of a deal and then of course he hears complaints about it and you know and so it's that whole that whole process where they they you know like they they it's something that they don't know how to do yet and they're just they're 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 doing things right and they're doing things wrong and they're calling themselves out on it or at least having somebody call them out on it, um, you know, when they do. And so, you know, because it's important not only to learn the the right way to do things, but also to learn the mistakes, right? Because if if people can't see the mistake, well, they'll say, well, there's no, there's no reason why I shouldn't do this, do it this way. And then the next thing, you know, they, they, they've uh, electrocuted themselves trying to build a time machine, you know, <laughs> you know, so, so you have to, you have to, you have to show people like both. Cause if they see, Oh, that's the, like, you, you know, you like to bring up the monkeys, the monkey see monkey do. If they see the monkey fail, then they know that that's, that's a fail. They don't have to do it themselves to know it's a failure. Right. Just as it is with the successes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it definitely showed some of their failures and, and successes as well. And how in some ways they like, they, they used immediately some of their odd, strange failures and turned them into like uh, successes right away. That's, that's part of what I appreciate about it. Like there was stuff in that that was going on, like in a conversation, like, and then like, in one conversation in one episode and then like by the end of that episode or like an episode later, they were like, these things were actually happening. Like uh, the girl was even talking about how like uh, she was showing interest in a person. Like she crossed her legs towards her, towards the other person and like leaned into them uh, while really intently listening. Then Then you actually see the, the, like the, uh, the serial killer, doing these things to him and and i found yeah. that to be like fantastic like yeah, like, yeah. storytelling and like right. like that was that was really great because it, it showed how he was actually getting himself pulled into the situation and it was yeah it was really brilliantly done and it just reminded everything you were talking about there just reminded me of it but yeah, yeah that's that's <laughs> That's one of those things you can tell you set something up right is when the person reading or watching is getting it at the at the exact time that the character in the book is like they're they're just like a slight step ahead of the person in the book or the character right. and so like like you you're 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 picking up on it right before they are so it's kind of like blues clues like where where's the speakers <laughs> where's the speakers <laughs> Have you seen the sneakers? <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> well, do you so, think that's a perfect spot to to lay to to start to wrap this up on? Because we're I heading so. to like the two and a half hour mark. And while I love long conversations with you, um, my girlfriend's probably waiting for me to to like go get dinner and stuff. And uh, but like seriously, thank you so much for for like. Uh, reaching out to me and and setting this up and and making this happen. This was filled with all sorts of information that's going to like help me along the way. And I, I hope that other people that listen to it also get as much out of it as I have. And it was really great catching up with you again after all this time too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. It's it's been far too long, and and maybe we should uh, you know get off our butts and do this more often. Right. I, I would have no issues with that. Um, do you uh, have anything else that you want to add in there? Maybe uh, add, like restate some of the ways that people can uh, reach out to you so as to ensure that uh, they can um, like help get access to these things, the, all these different resources that you're talking about, such as uh, like checking out your Patreon and checking out, um, your, your yeah. writer's program and stuff. Yeah, so uh, if you go to, um, this is the easiest thing to do, right? So you go to the King 4 Mayor with the number 4. So the King, the King 4, the number 4, Mayor dot com. All right, it's my, my, I think, easiest, it's easier than trying to tell you how to spell my name which if you can spell my name, you can also just type .com at the end, and it'll take you to the same website. But uh, those who, who can't spell French last names, uh, it's, it's the king, the number four mayor .com, and that takes you to my, my personal website. And from there, you get way too much information on me and the things I've done in my life because there's been way too many. Um, and uh, I'm going to put up on the front uh page where they can go to uh, my web pad in my uh, Patreon. Uh, till then, you can just kind of hunt around for the individual projects on uh, on my page. You can find uh, fake tattoos and you can find um, love and hamburgers on there. And um, yeah, that's the, that's the easiest easiest way to get in touch. And by the way, uh, I know I know you've been busy. Because you're like a big corporate Wall Street guy now, right? Something like that. Um, oh yeah, right. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but you 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 haven't you haven't uh, you haven't read my books yet, and I think you really should, especially big tattoos, love and hamburgers. This is much faster read. Um, but uh, they do but, seem really uh, up my alley, to be honest. It's it's like uh, I I feel bad having not read them, but you definitely piqued my interest to say the least. Yeah, definitely have to read fake tattoos because um, yeah, that is like the, that. That's like the the answer to the question that you and I have been asking each other for God knows how long now. That's that's my that's my final answer on the subject. Um, and of course, it's not the the end of the story, but it's it's my final answer on the subject. Um, so you should, if anybody should read it, you should read it, and uh, you have the link. Um, so, so you should, yeah, give it, give it a gander. You can read it on your phone, uh, real easy. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say. Read my book. <laughs> Fair enough, man. I appreciate it. Well, yeah, I appreciate again, it everyone, uh, that happens to listen to this in the future. Uh, I, I know, uh, a good, say hundred or so people download, uh, new episodes pretty much the first week that things happen then from there it trickles down to about like 75 to like 25, depending on the week that afterwards, uh, I, I still appreciate the fact that there are uh, a couple hundred people out there that are continuing to, to listen on a regular basis. Uh, since I have been, uh, re putting out new, uh, new shows. Uh, so thank you very much for, for, uh, listening in on this one and for, uh, your patience on some of our technical difficulties and uh, yeah, that's about it, man. Thanks. Thanks again, Ken. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Yeah. Thank you. You too, man. Talk to you later. Bye.